really a good idea? Sometimes sitting down to a good video game can be relaxing and de-stressing, but it's not the same with video games. Violent video games teach the wrong lessons, might have some connection to U.S. crime, and certainly do stir the blood. So while well, kids say they're just shooting screens, they might really be developing a taste for blood. First of all, teaching children to have grand control of everything might not be the right thing to do. The article, Hygiene Shootout, explains how a non-playing senior class judge is to arbitrate disputed kills and rule violations. The judge also makes a pie chart of death. The order of killing assignments, which he or she then distributes to squad shortly before opening day. Although leadership games can develop intuition and useful life skills, this is not the case with violent video games. These games place too much control in the hands of one young person. This is not something that should be taught. Violent video games are basically exercise in murder. In the high school assassination game, Killer, teams carry through assassinations with water guns. According to Hygiene Shootout, in a killer game at St. Anne's Private High School, in the end, the Protel Lothar team won with 21 kills. They celebrated with a spaghetti dinner. This shows how games like these encourage celebrating violence and how kids practice killing in these games. And practicing carrying out the best kill doesn't really sound like a useful life skill unless you plan on becoming a murderer. While many claim that playing violent video games doesn't scar anyone, they can be harmful. As the article, Shooting in the Dark states, none of these extreme acts like school shootings occur because of only one risk factor. But if you look at the literature, I think it's clear that violent media is one factor. As the experts state, I am not arguing that if you play video games, you instantly become a mass murderer. I, and yet, they do encourage it and stir you up. It doesn't build you up as a person, and the child most likely won't be able to handle the violence and allow it to affect them. According to the same article, lab experiments confirm what any gamer knows in his gut. Playing games like Call of Duty, Killzone 3, or Battlefield 3 stirs the blood. So this is proof that games in, like these inevitably harm a child's innocence. Yet, we can't ignore the fact that over the years, as violent video games have become more popular, violent crimes have decreased. So this fact must be acknowledged, as it seems that these games might really be keeping bad guys off their real weapons and out of committing real actions. According to the gaming, Potential criminals aren't committing crimes because they're spending so much time playing these violent games. This could be a reason for the surprising study connection. However, sometimes there seems to be a connection between shooters and video game obsession. Quote Boston Friend Stevie Goofy explains that Dylan Haybaugh, the Virginia Tech shooter, the Arizona shooter, Jared Lee Lohan, the Aurora shooter, James Bond, the Sandy shooter, Adam Lanza, they're all described as being addicted to violent video games. Isn't that quite the coincidence? Maybe video games have some sort of effect on them to bring out virtual violence into the real world. So there are examples of this link. And yet, unfortunately, you know, it seems every time something bad happens, whether we look at this, is there a connection between video gaming and the shooter? This is unfortunate because not all criminals are addicted to a lot of video games. In fact, most aren't. So it really isn't fair to overgeneralize. Plus, there are many factors that contribute to violence, such as video games, past experiences, being bullied, or isolated. And yet, supporters of violent video games make video games sound over jolly and helpful. So they too are being really unfair. According to Ivan Dashevsky, maybe the biggest effect of all of these Video, violent video games, is that they're super fun for people to play, especially adolescent boys. Maybe adolescent boys who are prone to real violence. And so if you can make the video games fun enough, the kids will stop doing everything else. This article uses extremely positive words, such as biggest, fun, everything, super, to sway readers toward this view. Dashevsky seems to be biased and unfair, ignoring all negative effects of video games. It's as if Dashevsky is suggesting that violent video games are all good times and smiles. Yes, smiles for murdering people. But if we think about the really time, not becoming criminals or lowering criminal rates, but essentially the way one acts, then violent video games aren't a good thing to do anyway, because they do affect behavior. As the article, Shooting in the Dark, explains, playing the violent video game can and does stir off those urges and mildly aggressive behavior. This proves that seeing those blood
negative one. Overall, although violent video games are not the cause of major violence, they are not possibly impacting children. I used to think these games, these kinds of games, might lead to criminals, but after much research, I realized they don't. However, I also realized just how much they encourage misleading ideas and produce negative feelings. They're not something anyone should encourage a child to do. And it would generally just be better to stay away from these rated M games. So next time you want to buy a murder game, take a moment to actually think about that fact. Reconsider pretending to shoot virtual people. Maybe even give friendly, nonviolent games a chance. Take a stand against violent video games and help children lead a more stable life.